Welcome to the session and this is a continuation of our metals and non-metals question answer session part one and I am uh, really really very happy with the overwhelming responses that I am getting from you. I sincerely appreciate your time and effort. Just like our part one session here also you will be getting a chance to make a note of your work or whatever you are learning from the session you can answer the questions as well and after the video if you have any question about any part of the session please feel free to let me know using the comment box of the video or you can connect me through the messenger just one request who all will be doing that please mention the question number you are talking about that is easy for me to connect with the question directly so welcome to everybody once again thank you for your time for today question number one is one of your friends bought a statue made of copper to her surprise it acquired a dull green coating after a couple of months explain the reason i repeat the question one of your friends bought a statue made of copper to her surprise it acquired a dull green coating after a couple of months explain the reason if you have any suggestion for this question i mean for the answer of this question you can definitely type in the comment box i just want to wait for a while if anyone is answering this question or not and by the time i, I would like to add after the session uh, you will get the youtube link of the same video I think that is going to be a better option to watch the same from the YouTube also along with the Facebook because in YouTube you will get the videos along with the subtitles. Always our ears may not be accent ready. Sometimes there can be a voice drop. So all these laggings can be overcome through the YouTube video. I think so. Choice is yours. I'm coming back to the question. Question number one was, one of your friends bought a statue made of copper. To her surprise, it acquired a dull green coating after a couple of months. Explain the reason. I have a brief suggestion for the answer of this question. We can write it like that the green material is a mixture of copper hydroxide and copper carbonate formed due to reaction of copper with moist air. Moist air means it is having water, oxygen and carbon dioxide. That means when copper is reacting with these elements or compounds that is water oxygen and carbon dioxide they are forming copper hydroxide and copper carbonate which creates the dull green coating on the statue i'm moving to question number two question number two is Student A or student 1 prepared a blue colored solution of copper sulfate in beaker A and placed an iron nail in it. Student B prepared a yellowish green solution of ferrous sulfate in beaker B and placed a copper ware in it. So there are two students, students A and students B. Students A prepared a blue colored solution of copper sulfate and 
kept it in beaker A, where a student B prepared a yellowish green colored solution of ferrous sulfate and it is kept in beaker B. In beaker A, that means in copper sulfate solution, student A placed an iron nail, whereas in beaker B, that means in yellowish green color solution of ferrous sulfate, a copper ware is placed. Now, the question is, what changes will they observe in the two beakers after an hour? The question is, what changes will they observe in the two beakers after an hour? I just want to wait for a while and I can provide one hint for the question. This question will be answered based on the metal activity series. And the metal activity series, we talked about this in metals non-metals part one session so you may get the reference from there too thank you everyone who all are watching and trying to answer the questions yeah welcome to the session polomi thank you so much for being here and who all are watching please try to share the session as much as you can as most of the people can get benefit of the session. And I already mentioned in different videos, if you cannot watch it for a long time, whenever possible and how long you can, that's all, also should be fine. Once it is uploaded and recorded, you can watch for the video whenever you want to watch it. I'm coming back to question number two. In beaker A, student A has taken a blue colored solution of copper sulfate and one iron nail is dipped in it. Whereas in beaker B, student B has taken yellowish green color solution of ferrous sulfate in which a copper ware is dipped. Now the question is, what changes will they observe in the two beakers after an hour? And definitely, I would suggest to start with uh, the reference of metal activity series. According to the series, if we pick up the part of the series where these two metals, iron and copper are included, it looks like zinc, then cadmium, then iron, then cobalt, then nickel, then tin, then lead, then hydrogen, and the last one is copper. Yes, that means in this part of the activity series, zinc is occupying the topmost position in this part and copper is occupying the lowest position in the series. And as a rule of using this series, the metals who are occupying the upper position in the series they can displace the metals who are at the bottom so according to this part of metal activity series iron would be able to displace copper from its solution whereas copper would not be able to displace iron from its solution so as a result of that we can conclude in beaker a a reddish brown layer of copper will deposit on the iron nail and the blue colored solution will become yellowish green. On the other hand, no change is observed in beaker B. Beaker B was having greenish yellowish green ferrous sulfate and in it a copper ware was dipped. As copper will not be able to displace iron due to its position in metal activity series, so definitely there will be no change in the color of the solution. Whereas in beaker A, copper sulfate solution is taken and iron nail is dipped and according to the metal activity series, 
iron is situated above copper so definitely iron would be able to displace copper in it, from its solution salt solution of course and as a result of that we would see the color change of the solution and i already mentioned a reddish brown layer of copper will deposit on the iron nail and the blue color solution will become yellowish green because the reaction between copper sulfate and iron is taking place over here so copper is uh, coming out of its salt solution and deposited on iron nail whereas iron is taking the place of copper and forming ferrous sulfate solution ferrous sulfate solution is yellowish green in color as a result of that solution from beaker a would also be yellowish green after one hour i think this is sufficient for this question uh, yes hi modhumita thank you for joining the session now i would prefer to move on to my question number 3 question number 3 is a doctor prescribed a tablet to a patient suffering from iron deficiency a doctor prescribed a tablet to a patient suffering from iron deficiency the tablet does not look like iron a doctor prescribed a tablet to a patient suffering from iron deficiency the tablet does not look like iron explain your answer yes anyone from the audience any student if you are here you can try to answer you can write your choices or write your preferences in the comment box my question was a doctor prescribed a tablet to a patient suffering from iron deficiency the tablet does not look like iron explain okay i'm coming to the answer of this question actually the tablet is not made out of iron metal that's the reason it does not look like iron it is made out of salt of iron it contains salt of iron so how do you conclude for this the tablet is not made of iron metal instead it contains a salt of iron that's enough for this question yes thank you everyone who all are joining now the next few questions will be of objective type so you can type your answer very easily in the comment box question number 4 name an element which is be inhaled by all living beings during breathing this is a very simple one name one element which is inhaled by all living beings during breathing so all of us we know the answer of this question this is a very simple one the element is oxygen then there is a continuation of this question is it a metal or non metal of course this is a non metal and what is the physical state of this non metal this is gaseous and there can be many more continuations uh, for example give one reaction or write down one reaction to show that oxygen is taking part in 
different chemical reactions of combustion. So we can uh, give example for the formation of carbon dioxide, formation of carbon monoxide. When uh, the oxidation or combustion, whatever you mention it, will take place in controlled air, the product will be carbon monoxide. And when it is in excess air or sufficient air, the product is going to be as carbon dioxide. Whatever you mention, please try to balance the equation. Balanced chemical equations are taken as the complete chemical equation. So keep this in mind. I'm coming to the next question, question number five. Name the element which is used for making electric wires. Name the element or elements which is used for making electric wires. According to the, to the question, one element should be fine. So I would prefer to pick up copper because mostly copper wires are used in uh, making electric wires. It is available and cost-wise also it is reasonable. So copper is the most reasonable answer. I'm moving to my next question, question number six. Name one non-metal which is used for making crackers. Name one non-metal which is used for making crackers. Sulfur is the non-metal which can be used for making crackers. There is a continuation of this question. Is there any specific physical property of this non-metal? Yes, sulfur, sulfur looks yellow in color. So this is a very significant physical property of sulfur. My next question, question number seven. Name the metal used for making rails. Name the metal used for making rails. Very easy to answer. This is iron. Name the metal used for making rails. Answer is iron. Next question. Name the non-metal used for disinfecting water. Name the non-metal used for disinfecting water. I think we talked about a bit about this disinfecting uh, quality or capacity of this non-metal in our part one session. So who missed the session, obviously always welcome to watch the part one session once again. And the answer for this question is chlorine. Next, I have collected few questions where you are supposed to reply it as either true or false. So just like before, you can always type your answer in the comment box. Question number nine, the property of metals by virtue of which they can be drawn into wares is called ductility. The property of metals by virtue of which they can be drawn into wares is called ductility. Is it true or false? I just want to wait for a while if anyone wants to answer this question. Question number nine. The property of metals by virtue of which they can be drawn into wares is called ductility. Is it true or false this is true yes yeah it is true who are trying to answer using my messenger you can directly answer under this video using the comment box always welcome to do that question number 10 metals are good conductor of electricity but poor conductor of heat true or false question number 10 metals are good conductor of electricity but poor conductor of heat true or false 
this is a false statement because we know that metals are good conductor of electricity and heat for both. Question number 11. Articles made of metals produce ringing sound when struck hard. Articles made of metals produce ringing sound when struck hard. Is the statement true or false? Question number 11. Articles made of metals produce ringing sound when struck hard. It is a true statement. The statement is true. I am moving to question number 12. Oxides of non-metals and metals are acidic in nature. Oxides of metals and non-metals are acidic in nature. Do you think it's true or false? What is your choice? Please send me the answer when possible. This is false because we know that the metallic oxides are basic in nature whereas the non-metallic oxides are acidic in nature. So this is a false option. Question number 13. A less reactive metal replaces a more reactive metal from its salt solution in water. Question number 13. A less reactive metal replaces a more reactive metal from its salt solution in nature. Sorry, in water. I repeat, a less reactive metal replaces a more reactive metal from its salt solution in water. This is a false statement. We discussed about metal activity series in this session a little bit, mostly in metals, nonmetals part one question answer session. And we know that more reactive metals can displace the less reactive metals from their salt solutions. But here the reverse statement is stated, which is false. So question number 13 is a false statement. Thank you everyone who all are watching and sending me the answers using my messenger. Definitely I will get back to you after the session. And whenever possible, please watch the session, make appropriate note of it, try to share as much as possible. And always students, I have a suggestion, discuss with your friends. This is beneficial for you as well as for your friends too. And I already mentioned after the session in few hours, maybe two to three hours, the YouTube link will be provided along with this video. So if you have any problem in hearing it over here, please go and watch from the YouTube link of Uma's classroom as you can get the benefit of using the subtitles over there. Thank you for your time. I'm moving to my next question. Question number 14. Question number 14 is, iron is more reactive than copper. Iron is more reactive than copper. Can you write an activity to show this? Question number 14. Iron is more reactive than copper. Can you write an activity to show this? This question is closely linked to my question number two from today's session, where we talked about two solutions were taken by two different students in two different beakers. Beaker one or beaker A was having a copper sulfate solution and one iron nail was dipped in it. Whereas in beaker B, student B has taken 
ferrous sulfate solution and one iron, sorry, copper ware was dipped in it. So question number 14 and question number two, they are very closely related to each other. You can give the example of question number two. So you can write it like that. Before going to the answer, I want to repeat the question. Question number 14, iron is more reactive than copper. Can you write an activity to show this? So here I would suggest write the activity based on the fact that when an iron nail is put in a beaker containing copper sulfate solution, iron replaces copper, copper from the solution since it is more reactive. Copper metal and iron sulfate are the products which are obtained as a re result of the chemical reaction. So I am repeating the question and the answer over here. Question number 14, iron is more reactive than copper. Can you write an activity to show this? So write the activity based on the fact that when an iron nail is put in a beaker containing copper sulfate solution, iron replaces copper from the solution since it is more reactive. Copper metal and iron sulfate are the products which are obtained as a result of the chemical reaction. And definitely, after writing your statement, include the chemical reaction involved for the process. This is a reaction between copper sulfate and iron nail that ends up with two products, metallic copper and iron sulfate of course ferrous sulfate and write a balanced equation also i would prefer if you can include all the observations along with this equation or reaction suppose wh wherever you are writing copper write beside copper draw one downward arrow just to give the impression that copper is deposited. Wherever in your reaction to the right hand side, you are writing your product copper sulfate, sorry, ferrous sulfate. Right beside that, within parentheses, try to include the color of ferrous sulfate solution yellowish green or greenish solution and now i am coming to the left of the equation left hand side of the equation where you started your equation and one of the reactants was copper sulfate right beside that try to write down blue as copper sulfate solution looks blue so inside the parenthesis try to include the word blue so be specific as much as you know and the statement part yes you are free to answer on your own you can pick up any other example you are free to do that just make sure your statement is logically correct and scientifically correct that's all now I have reached to the last question of today's session, question number 15. This is a different type of question. It is fill in the blanks type question and based on that paragraph you will be making after filling out the blanks, you have to make two different questions. So still now I was giving you the questions. This is the time when after completing the paragraph, you will be making two questions on your own. Question number 15, fill in the blanks to complete the following paragraph. Fill in the blanks to complete the 
following paragraph. The name of the product formed in the reaction of sulfur and dash is sulfur dioxide gas. The name of the product formed in the reaction of sulfur and dash is sulfur dioxide gas. Yes, SO2, sulfur dioxide gas. So, in the blank space, the only option is oxygen. Next, when sulfur dioxide is dissolved in blank space or dash, Sulfur, when sulfur dioxide is dissolved in dash, or the, here is a blank space, sulfurous acid is formed. I repeat, when sulfur dioxide is dissolved in dash, sulfurous acid is formed. Yes, the only choice is water. Next, the sulfurous acid turns dash litmus paper to dash. The sulfurous acid turns dash litmus paper to dash. So, for the first blank space or dash, your choice is going to be blue. For the second dash or blank space, your choice is going to be red and the next line is generally oxides of dash are acidic in nature generally oxides of dash are acidic in nature for this blank space your choice is going to be non metals so after filling out the blanks now my paragraph is complete so i would like to read out the whole paragraph and then i am coming to the next part of this question the name of the product formed in the reaction of sulfur and oxygen is sulfur dioxide gas when sulfur dioxide is dissolved in water, sulfurous acid is formed. The sulfurous acid turns blue litmus paper to red. Generally, oxides of nonmetals are acidic in nature. This is my complete paragraph. The next part of the question is, after completing the paragraph, write two questions. After completing the paragraph, write two questions which you can raise on the basis of this information. That means the questions you are going to make, the answers for those should be included in this paragraph. I just want to give you some time if anyone is interested to make a question and type it here for me that would be great otherwise when you will be practicing afterwards you can try it on your own Two possible questions may be. Question 1. Name the gas formed by the reaction of sulfur and oxygen. Name the gas formed by the reaction of sulfur and oxygen. And question number 2. What is the nature of oxides of nonmetals? Question number 2. What is the nature of oxides of nonmetals? Maybe the questions and answers are too easy to understand or too easy to frame. I picked up this question because I found the pattern of the question is of different type. 
that's why it came into my choice so that's all for today's session i hope you all enjoyed the session please try to share the session from umas classroom as much as possible thank you for your time and patience thank you students for your effort that you are putting in answering the questions and you are trying to connect to me i am really blessed to get this overwhelming responses hope to see you again in this platform stay well be safe thank you once again bye